What is the importance of nectar in our body? It's a very interesting, interesting question. Um, nectar, when, when we speak about it in a, an Indian spiritual standpoint, we use, we use terms like amrit, sacred, divine nectar which is literally the juice, the essence in our bodies and in our lives. But also when you speak about pran, which is our life force, or when you speak about ojas, which is also the, the sacred force, the energy of the body, these are also sometimes referred to as nectar. So I'm going to take them, take them collectively. Well, the importance of it is it's what gives us life. Prawn is literally our life force. So when the soul departs the body at death, we talk about the prawn leaving the body, the breath leaving the body. When statues, deities in Hindu temples are, when they're done being sculpted by the artist and they are installed in the temples, there's a ceremony called the Pran Pratishta, which is actually a very, very sacred, scientific, many day long, intricate ceremony of literally breathing life, breathing prawn into the statue. And that's why as a very quick but important diversion, people think that Hindus worship idols and the Hindus always say, no, no, we're not worshiping idols. See, actually the sacred breath has been brought into this. This is not an idol. This is the divine who has been gracious enough to come into this form. But with the Pran Pratishta ceremony, with the bringing in the breath, it literally goes from being a statue to being a deity, an, an image of the divine, a holder of the divine, a way of us to access the divine. So on the one hand, it's literally our life, our physical life. You need it to be alive. Go a step, a step deeper. We'll begin with the most physical, grossest level. Prawn is life. You have it, you have a lot of life. You don't have it, you no longer have life. You may have a body, but you no longer have life. Take it a step, a step more subtle. Because the prawn is not only physical life. It's also the quality of our inner life. And that's where it's slightly distinct from breath. The translation, the literal translation of prawn is not just breath. So it's not simply oxygen. It's actually an energy and a power and a life force that comes in. So it's deeper than simply oxygen. And therefore, it determines the quality, which is where you have practices like pranayam. How do we use the breath? Not just to expand our lung capacity. I mean, it's not about how long can you hold your breath underwater. It's not about... How much can you fill your lungs? Although that's wonderful. Oxygenating our cells is fantastic for keeping them healthy. But it's deeper than that. Pranayam is actually a method of using the breath to attain oneness with God. This is where when it comes in the eight limbs of yoga as given by Patanjali, 
it's, it's part of the path to samadhi. It's part of the path to that ecstasy, that union with the divine. So the prawn is that which we can use to connect with the divine force within us. Ojas, and of course we could go all night on this, but I want to just make sure that we have time for other questions. Ojas, again, is our, our energy. The, the, the energy in the body, the light in the body, that which fuels us, that which keeps us going on a literally very physical level. There are practices about Learning to contain your ojas. You know, one of the questions that I get all the time, being an orange, orange-robed sannyasi, which is a path of celibacy, one of the questions I get all the time is, why celibacy? Why do you need to be celibate? And, and of course, the the tradition, the spiritual tradition is filled with innumerable examples of non-celibate rishis who were householders, who were enlightened, who were incredible gurus and masters. And so there's nothing that says, thou shalt be celibate, unless you've taken vows of celibacy, of course. But the teaching of celibacy and the reason for it on the very, very committed and deep and I don't want to use the word sacrifice. It's got such a negative connotation. But a a path of spirituality in which it's spirituality above all else. Spirituality before all else. On that path, one of the critical reasons for celibacy and why it's such a core component is because it's believed that sex is one of the things that depletes our ojas, which is why even married couples, even people who are not celibates, who are not sannyasis, are always, always instructed by spiritual masters, like, use this carefully. This is not just whenever, wherever, however, at any time, whenever, you know, the urge hits. That that energy is precious. And if you you lose it, as it is believed you do in sex, that has very, very significant ramifications on both your physical health and your emotional and spiritual health. So that's not all that ojas is, but that's one, one very important aspect of it is it's, it's the juice that runs us, that keeps us, keeps us able to stay, to stay healthy, to stay energized, to stay full of light. Then we speak lastly about amrit that nectar, that juice, and that, that's really that which flows through us. We speak a lot about ras, spiritual juice. And you'll hear, you'll hear Pooja Swamiji sometimes very sweetly talk about how life should be juicy, juicy. And it's something he says very, very frequently, and everybody, everybody giggles a little bit. But the meaning, the meaning of that, really is your life should be filled with nectar, with ras, that it shouldn't, it shouldn't be dry. You could have a physical body. Food fills a physical body. Medicine take, takes care of a physical body. Clothes protect a physical body. But if you don't have that juice then you may have days in your life, but not life in your days. And so nectar is really that which brings the juice to life. 
And so on all of those levels, it's, it's crucial whether you want to be just physically healthy, whether you want to be spiritually full of light, whether you want to be deeply grounded in your practice, whatever level it is, nectar. Nectar is critical. And this is where, where we come to spiritual places. It's not the only way to get nectar, of course. Fortunately, by grace, it's available in so many ways. Meditation, prayer, chanting, yoga, service, love. It's all around us. It's all around us. But this is where it's so important to, to take it in so that our lives can really be, as he says, juicy, juicy. <laughs>